And the other one's from an English teacher. I am a 26-year veteran of English teacher, and I would like permission to post a copy of the page of 20 Questions and Answers about 2012 for distribution to my teacher colleagues. While reading on another side about some of the letters you received from teenagers, it occurred to me that we teachers have an obligation to be informed on this issue in order to address the fears that our students may have. The topic could be used for study units on propaganda techniques or manipulation of language, critical thinking skills, free speech issues, media studies, the importance of thorough research, and so on. Mostly, we might save a life, or at the very least, calm someone down. The whole 2012 thing, for me, has gone from mild amusement to disgust, to real alarm over our nation's ignorance. Again, let me say, as I've said before, I have no idea how many people are involved in this. I hear from the people who are concerned. Is it 1%? Is it 5%? Whatever it is, it's too many for nonsense like this. And I just put this up to show you it's still happening. These all came in the last two weeks. I love the last one. Is NASA trying to go into space now? This was referring to Obama's speech last week about going to an asteroid. Is NASA trying to go to space now under the asteroid mission to negotiate with Anunnaki of aliens in Nibiru? <laughs> Rumors are spreading. <laughs> the other one, there are just 977 days left. How stupid do you think I am? This is too real for most conformity-living, brain-dead people. Mind control program is really that blinding. That's you, I think. I don't think that was me. I think that was you. You're the, the blind, brain-dead people that he was worried about. Two final things. One is cosmophobia, which was mentioned in the title. That's a name I coined because so many people are afraid of things that they've heard about in news in astronomy. And part of it is this, this feeling that even if they don't believe in Nibiru, they still think something terrible is going to happen in December 2012. No cause and effect there, just something. So they will grasp at anything. These are people that seem to want the world to end. And believe it or not, these are all things I have received messages about that people are afraid of. Afraid in the sense that they might destroy the Earth. Alignment of the sun with the galactic center, heating the Earth's core, crossing the galactic equator, the black hole in the galactic center, black holes generally, dust clouds, a dark rift, collision with the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy, collision with the Andromeda galaxy, impact by asteroids, impact on the sun by a suicidal planet, meteors, explosions. <laughs> I mean, it really took me aback. When I got a letter from someone who said, I can't sleep at night because I'm worrying about Betelgeuse. <laughs> Astronomy, which everybody here knows is fun, which has so many interesting things, in which the newspapers give us repeatedly stories about the universe, is interpreted by these people as something to be afraid of. It's very sad. So finally, conclusions, and this isn't a scientific survey. Just some things that I've gleaned from this, from this experience, which has been very educational to me. Some of it's obvious. A lot of people get their information from the Internet, from YouTube, uh, from cable TV. Many, many people do not understand the co concept of cause and effect. They say, well, the Mayans said the world was going to be destroyed, so it will be. And then maybe they ask, what could do it? You know, they start with the premise that the bad thing's going to happen. Or Nostradamus said it, so it must be true. Many believe in prophecy. I had no idea of that. They give greater weight to something Nostradamus said than they do to the results of science. Um, this belief in alignments is amazing to me. Because I don't know how you counter it. If someone just takes it as a matter of faith, if three planets line up, that's going to do focus rays at us. What can I say? It does nothing. It's a purely astrological concept. Astronomers are not interested in alignments because they don't do anything. It's just an accident of geometry and it doesn't last very long anyway. Um, many are profoundly distrustful of government. 
And that's among the people that write to me. What about the people that don't? Many people are, are really clueless about re- distinguishing reliable from false information. When I answer questions to the public, not just about this, but a lot, a lot of astronomy things, generally, if I don't know the answer to, off the top of my head, the first thing I do is look at Wikipedia. And I have never been disappointed. Wikipedia is amazing. It's amazingly up to date. If you want to know what's happening in the volcanic eruption in Iceland right now, and you go there, you will find that's updated at least once a day with new information. And most people won't do it, and many argue. They tell me, I'm a student. How can you recommend Wikipedia? That has no authority at all. If I quoted Wikipedia in a college paper, it would be thrown out. They wouldn't even read it. Um, Well, I kind of understand that because Wikipedia is too good. If you were asked to go out and research a college paper and all you did was look up the answer in Wikipedia, you'd get the answer right, but you wouldn't learn how to do research. But people dismiss that and then believe these, to me, obviously crazy sites. Um, Certainly there are a lot of people who are afraid. They're afraid of astronomy. They're afraid of nature. Right now they're afraid of earthquakes and volcanoes. I got a note today by someone that said, if the eruption of the volcano in Iceland continues for much longer, will all humans be killed? The good side is most are genuinely interested and grateful when I write to them. And again, I'm just, just getting a sample of the people that write to me, but I still am proud to speak for NASA, and I'm glad there are a lot of people out there for whom NASA does not mean uh, never a straight answer, who still think that, uh, that we're trying to do good, and that organizations like the Astronomical Society of the Pacific and the SETI Institute and Foothill College and all these others are talking about something that's real, a real world, a scientific world. A world of fascinating facts, of cause and effect, of theories that are based on observations and not the predictions of Nostradamus. But we're stuck with this, and I'll bet you we'll continue right up until the day of December 21st, 2012. And then astronomer Garrett Vershear wrote an interesting book on Planet X. And uh, he concluded with a statement. He said, well, it'll be worried about, no matter what scientists say, right up to the moment. And then when the moment's pass, there'll immediately be a new threat. It says, there'll always be a planet X. No matter how much the scientists say, how never much of apply logic, there'll always be something in the heavens that people are afraid of. But I would rather they would go out and look at the sky and its beauty and appreciate the world out there and appreciate the ability of science to explain things and not fall back on this sort of strange gibberish. So thank you very much for your attention.